you're part of the Extreme Microbiome Project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does that involve and what kind of fun, uh, fun organisms have you uh, learned about, have you gotten to explore? We have a, it's a really fun project, XMP, the extreme microbiome, which is as it sounds like. We look for really odd places, like high, heavy radiation environments, high salt, high or low temperature, you know, strange area, the space station, for example, lots of radiation and microgravity, places where organisms can evolve for interesting adaptations. And some of them have been organisms we've seen like at a, a candy pink lake in Australia called Lake Hillier, mm -hmm. which we just published a paper on this where- it, Why it, is it pink? Uh, so it's actually uh, Danelia salina, so these, one of these organisms, there's a mixture of bacteria and some algae that are there that make it bright pink. So they actually make keratinoids, these like really sort of uh, orangey and kind of pink molecules when you look at them in the light. So if you, know, if you get enough of the bacteria, it becomes pink. So, and it's not just pink, it's like bubblegum pink the lake. And so we, uh, that, that's just an odd, it's a halophile, meaning that it grows in 30% salt. Mm -hmm. And if you go below 10, 15% salt, it doesn't even grow. It actually kills it. Where's oh, that? wow. Yeah, there it is, like here. Is it toxic to humans or no? It, so when you walk in the pink lake, actually, it's so hypertonic, meaning it's so salty, you can feel it lysing and killing your cells on your foot. So it actually hurts to walk in because it's so salty. Uh, so yeah, so but it won't kill. You. It'll. It, it, Listen, you have to suffer for art. And that's right. Great that's art right. requires suffering. Right. I mean, so it is a beautiful lake. Uh, we, you have to get permits to go sample there. But we actually just got an email last week. There's pilots who fly over this in Australia because they love the color. Yeah. So he emailed us one of the pilots and he said, "Hey guys, I saw you publish this paper. It's not as pink as it used to be because he loves flying over it. And it was like a little bit less pink because they had a bunch of rain in the past yeah. few weeks. So it was just a little bit diluted. So we we reassured him it'll get more pink as they grow again." Uh, but basically, yeah, it, it's a beautiful pink lake, and so that is gorgeous. It's almost like a, it's like a Dr. Seuss book or something. It does, it's like it doesn't is even it look hard real. to get to. Yeah, it's, there's no road. You have to, you have to basically fly uh, land nearby it and then paddle in. But uh, so it's not next to anything, so it's hard to get to. But once you get there, um, it's beautiful. If anyone knows how to get there, let me know. I want to <laughs> go there. Okay, cool. What are some other extreme organisms? that you study? Other ones, uh, there's some organisms we studied in the space station called Acinetobacter pitii, which is a, a often found in human skin, but we found the hundreds of strains in the space station that we brought down and, and curated and, and then sequenced. Uh, and this is with uh, Katsuri Venkatswaran, who's at Jet Propulsion Laboratory working with him. And they have evolved, so they're now, they no longer look like any Earth-based Acinetobacter. They don't look like, they've now basically a new species. So actually we, uh, there's a, there's a different species of bacteria and fungi that have now mutated so much on the space station, they're literally a new species. And so we have found some of those that have just, they're, they're evolving in space, as life is always evolving, and we can see it also in the space it's station. It's an entirely new species born on the space station. Yeah, yeah, that's completely different. So we, we found one species actually um, that we named after a, a donor to, to Cornell, someone who's donated funds to research. So we named a different species of fungus after him, uh, Naganishia tolchinskia because he's Igor Tolchinsky. So mm -hmm. as a thank you for him donating to Cornell, we said we've named this fungus uh, that we found on the space station for you. Was he uh, grateful hey, or yes. did he stop funding all <laughs> research? <laughs> he was very grateful. And then, and I told him, I said, if you have like an ex-girlfriend, we could try and name like a, a you know, a genital fungus after her or something her. if you want. And he said, yeah. he said, maybe, but <laughs> get back to me some. <laughs> he stopped answering emails after that. Okay, what about like in extreme conditions? Um, in ice, mm -hmm. in heat, is that something of interest to you? In the things that survive, where most things can't. Yes, of, of keen interest. I think th that will be the roadmap for some of the potential adaptations. What we could think of for human cells, or certainly for our human, the microbiome, like just all the microorganisms in and on and around us. So we've seen, you know, even there's this one crater. It's called. Um, the, the the lake of fire, it's in Turkmenistan where it's been on fire because of, of oil that had been set on fire decades ago and it's still burning. So we collected some samples from there and those were some Pseudomonas putida, some species we found there that can- So there's stuff alive there. That seems to be surviving there by this large uh, pit of fire. Oh yeah, there it is, the desert. It's been just on fire for decades apparently. What the? <laughs> so this is another place that <laughs> it's we... just a lake of fire. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, they said Soviet it, 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 scientists had set up a drilling rig here for extraction of natural gas. Of course, it would be in this part of the world that you would get something like this. But the rig collapsed, and methane gas is being released from the crater. 
Yeah, so for those just listening, we're looking at a at a lake uh, full of fire, and there's something alive there, allegedly. And pseudomedias are known to be some of the most tough organisms. They actually can clean toxic waste from, you know, in areas of Superfund sites where there's so much waste that's been deposited. You'll find them there as well. Actually, there's one place in the Gowanus Canal. We have something that's called it's a, in New York City, in Brooklyn, and it is a complete toxic waste dump. That was where a lot of waste in the 1700s was dumped. And so the you know, the gateway to hell um, is what it's called. But the the, the, the <laughs> that's the, the nickname for the lake. <laughs> so, so the oh, so the uh, the Gowanus Canal is also a place that has been fun to sequence and and see pseudomonas species that can survive there. Basically, pulling toxins from the environment. So it's as if you create this toxic landscape. And then evolution comes in and says, oh, fine, I'll make things that can survive here. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the biochemistry of those species, what, what they've created is their own salvation, basically. The selection has made them survivors. And suddenly you can use that to remediate other polluted sites, for example. So That explains Twitter perfectly. The toxicity <laughs> created <creates> adaptation <laughs> for the, for the uh, psychological microbiome that is uh, social media. 